So after emailing and calling CDR King for months, I finally found a store which has the large solar panels in stock. So I'm back home now. I bought the 80 watt panel and then the 50 watt panel. Um, oh, I could spend all day in that shop. I love it. I could buy so much junk. Anyway, here's the uh, 80 watt panel and I'll just show you the front thing here. Um, it's already too late to do any kind of testing outside. Let's say that I also bought this charge controller. It's a 10 amp charge controller. Um, it's pretty basic. It just has, you know, a standard uh, 12 volt out. It doesn't have any kind of inverter or anything like that. Um, it doesn't have USB. It's really just quite basic. It costs about 1200 peso, which seemed kind of expensive because in the Mega Mall branch, I've seen this uh, charge controller that they had for like 1500. Um, and it had like an inverter in it, like an AC inverter. Um, so I looked it up on their website, and sure enough, they do have this one, which is about, uh, it's actually about 1600 peso. But it has USB output and an AC um, inverter inside, and it's only 1600. So for the extra 400, you get a lot more functionality. But then to be honest, I probably just want a basic charge controller because, you know, CDR King products, you know, they're just rebrands of generic anyway, but they're generally not that great. At least with the solar panels, there's not too much that can go wrong. Um, but with anything electronic, you probably want to keep it as basic as possible. So, you know, it's probably a good thing that I don't have the AC inverter and the USB ports and everything like that. So, there you go. So, let's take a look at the charge controller. It's pretty basic. Now, one thing I noticed when I turned it over there it's just like a, a clinking noise. Now that sounds like a relay. Um, we might have to actually open this up and have a look. Uh, got this warranty sticker on there. Anyway, so it sounds like there's some kind of relay in there. Um, so what do we have on the inputs and outputs? Well, we have solar panel here, battery here, and then our load going in here. Or going out there, rather. Uh, we've got a button here, not sure what that does. Uh, let's have a look at the instructions manual. So, suitable for 12 or 24 volt batteries, it automatically detects. Pulse width modulation, of course, because it's a cheapy. It's got a MOSFET inside um, without any mechanical switch. But that mm, definitely sounds like there's a, a relay in there. Uh, it can work with gel, sealed, flooded batteries, blah blah blah, reverse protection, um, over protection against overheating, overcharging, etc. It's got a temperature sensor, and we see something here about the temperature. Uh, what else does it have? Um, uh, pretty basic. Some wiring diagrams, you know. Uh, some information about how it does a bulk charge, boost charge, float charge. So, it might be alright, could be okay, should look after the battery. Uh, charging indicators, blah blah blah. Okay, so this button, what does it do? Uh, okay, so the button swaps between your different batteries, whether it's a sealed, gel, or flooded type. So, you probably wouldn't want to accidentally press that. Um, I doubt that would happen, to be honest. What else is there? Mm, not much else. So, pretty basic, but uh, should do the job. But that definitely sounds. Can you hear that? Let me shake it next to the camera. Definitely sounds like a, a relay in there. Hmm, you know what? Oh, I want to crack into this thing, but I want to test it first to make sure it actually works. See, it's got a 12. Uh, no, not 12 month. It's got a 3 month warranty. Um, but if I take that sticker off, they're not going to honour the warranty. Um, damn it! I want to open this thing up and have a look. It definitely sounds like it's got a relay. I think we should just go for it. Maybe I'll hook it up to a 12 volt source first, make sure that it's actually working. And if it works, just go for it. Just crack it open and have a look inside. Well, there goes the warranty taking the sticker off and let's crack this bad boy open. I am wondering if rather than it being a relay if it's just these um, terminals here that are making the clunking clunking noise but I'm still curious to see what's inside this so let's open it up. Oops. Okay. 
Right, how do we get into this thing? Now we might need to pry it open a little bit, so let's go in here. There we go. Okay. Right, here we go. So I assume we've got some something under here that needs to dissipate its heat because that looks like the um the heat transfer compound stuff. Ah right, yeah, there you go. So you might be thinking, oh well, why have they used aluminium for this? It's you know kind of expensive compared to the plastic they've used for this. Well, this is the heat sink. They're using that compound there to transfer the heat onto this aluminium, and that's how that works. So let's have a look at what else we've got in here. A couple more screws, four more screws. Let's take those out. Looks to be all of them. Aha. Uh -huh. So, yeah, definitely no relay in here. Um, it must just be these terminals that are making that noise. You do see there we've got a car fuse, or what looks like a standard 12 volt fuse that you'd find in a car. Um, it's kind of annoying that they've decided to solder that on there. Why didn't they just have a, you know, like a cutout at the back of this plastic? Um, and then make it user replaceable so that if this fuse ever blows we can just replace it um, kind of annoying which one is that let's have a look that is marked as the battery so that's going um, to the battery let's try and get my camera to focus sorry there we go yeah so most likely that's tied into this um, I mean, we're going to add our own inline fuses anyway, so hopefully they would blow before anything in here did. Um, not much else to see, really. Obviously, that's our push button for the battery selection. Not a lot going on. So I'll put it back together and uh, seal it all up again. So I've just opened up the 50 watt panel, and you can see all the information about it here. I'll just hold the camera steady for a second so you can read that. Okay, pause the video if you want to have more information on that. Um, so, I've just looked here. This is where you have to wire your um, positive and negative up. And look where they put the warranty sticker on the screw, or over the screw hole, where you have to undo that to take this off and put your wires in. So, although it's only a one-week warranty, it's pretty much a zero-second warranty, because I can't even connect this thing and test that it actually works without removing that sticker. Oh, come on, CDR King. So there goes another warranty sticker. Um, what you'll find in here is obviously where you're going to wire up your positive and your negative, and they've already soldered in this uh, blocking diode. And what that means is that um, power can flow from the solar panel to the battery, but not from the battery to the solar panel, which means at night you don't have to worry about the uh, solar panel, you know, eating up all the juice out of your uh, battery. So I'm just wiring up this uh, 50 watt panel since it doesn't come with wires and one thing I notice is it doesn't have any gasket on it and the 80 watt panel does so that when you seal it up like that it creates a nice watertight seal around there so um, I already have some of this uh, black RTV silicone which is like a DIY gasket maker so I'm just going to put a little bit of that around here to make a nice uh, watertight gasket and screw this back on so if you're going to put this panel out um, where it could get rained on, you definitely want to consider putting a bit of um, this silicone around there, just to make sure it's a, it really is a watertight seal. I'm quite surprised about that actually, because the 80 watt panel has a nice um, gasket around here, nice rubber gasket. So yeah, there you go. So here's the 80 watt panel. You'll notice that this one already comes with some wires connected, which is quite nice. They're not very long, but um, definitely good enough, especially if you're going to put a few of these, uh, you know, connect a few of these together. It's long enough to join them. Uh, inside, you've got your blocking diodes again, um, and I'll show you the information. Just pause the video if you want to read. So let's take a look at the output of this 50 watt panel here. Oh no, my. Multimeter is melting in the sun. 
Anyway, so voltage of 19.6 volts and the amps. Oops, let's connect that. 2.5, so around 20 volts, 2.5 amps. It's pretty close to spec. Okay, now let's measure the output of the 80 watt panel. We see the voltage is 19.6 and it's putting out around 4 amps, 3.7, the sun has just gone behind the clouds, so it's dropped down a bit, 3.5. It was at four, I'm sure it would go a little bit higher once the sun comes out from that cloud. Now let's measure the open circuit current on this 80 watt panel. Five amps. Measure the voltage. 22 volts. So that's more like a 100 watt, and that's only meant to be an 80 watt panel. Um, of course, that's open circuit, but uh, that's a very good indication that this is a good panel.